I am going to do my Vinyl Finds 11. I think it's 11. It might be not 11. I don't even know anymore. I've lost track. I feel like it's been ages since I made a Vinyl Finds video. I think it's been like almost two months since I did one. And in that two months, I have obviously splurged a bit on vinyl. I thought I had more to show to be honest but I still have a lot to show. Literally all I have to show are Michael Jackson and Queen records in this video. I am going to start as always with 7 inch records and I'm going to start with the only 7 inch record of Michael Jackson that I have to show and this is the way you make me feel. Now you're probably looking at me thinking don't you already own that? Yes, yes I do. But this is a UK release. It is slightly rarer than the other pressing. I think it's Holland that I have. These were released in the UK and they do have the competition sticker on the front. Now a lot of these records that you find on eBay that have the sticker on the front I'm missing something inside and I was really wanting this one to be complete. I'm trying to collect like all the limited edition and rare bad album singles and I'm getting there and this was one of them that I really wanted but I didn't just want to buy the sleeve that had the sticker I wanted it to have the thing inside so it would be complete and it took me a long time but this was literally in about £1.50 I thought it would cost me a lot of money and it is complete with the thing inside that I wanted and I'm not just talking about the record um, this is what the record looks like the B side is just the instrumental and then the most important thing in this stickered sleeve that you should have with it is this slip of paper right here and it is the competition little slip of paper that you sent off to win tickets for a Michael Jackson concert I mean can you imagine doing that and actually winning this slip of paper is usually always always missing from this sticker sleeve because people actually probably sent it off so it wouldn't always come with this anymore because you'd send it off to get the tickets. The questions on here, this is absolutely ridiculous. Question one, who produced Michael Jackson's current album? Bad. Question two, Michael had a number one hit single earlier this year with a duet with Cedar Grauet. Michael sings another duet on this album, but who does he sing this one with? These are so easy, man. On which track on Bad can you hear Michael's heartbeat? And Complete the following sentence in not more than 10 words, alright? I want you to answer this question in the comments because this could be pretty funny. Michael Jackson is the world's most exciting live performer because... You fill in the blanks. <laughs> the closing date will be 4th of December 1988. Sorry guys, we're a few years out of date to enter that. And so I have like five Freddie Mercury and Slash Queen records to show. I've kind of had a bit of luck finding solo Freddie Mercury lately. I've kind of been trying to collect more solo Freddie. If you watched my mini Freddie Mercury slash Queen record unboxing video that I uploaded, you've seen four out of the five of these, but I'm going to show them in a bit more detail. Freddie Mercury and Montserrat Caballé Cabell I ain't got a clue Barcelona 7 inch single and the B side is Exercises and Free Love I bloody love the Barcelona album didn't think I would because it's like opera it's opera but I think anything Freddie touches I'll automatically fall in love with it so this one is on the Polydor label looks like that I won like these for like under three pounds each from the same seller and I thought that was a steal. Freddie Mercury time from the time, mu time, the musical. I always butcher that. Um, this B side is the instrumental version and I just love this cover so bloody much. I just want to own this on 12 inch version just so I can see this bigger, you know. I just really like the label on this as well. I think it's really cool. 
And then the last 7 inch solo Freddy uh, single that I have is Living on My Own with the live picture rather than like the photo shoot picture, you know. You know what I mean. Um, the B side is My Love is Dangerous and this is from Freddy's first solo album, Mr. Bad Guy. I don't own that on vinyl yet and I really want to own it. Um, this is on CBS. Looks like that. I love, love, goddamn love this song. It is so great. And then I have two Queen 7 inch singles to show and I have this one. Another one bites the dust. This was like the number one 7 inch single by Queen for me to get for a long time. I just always got out bed on this blogger and I got it now. Another one by Sudust, epic song and also the B-side song Dragon Attack is one of my favourite songs of the game. I just think it's so good. It's on EMI. I haven't been having a lot of luck lately with getting the remaining Queen albums on vinyl that I need to get. Um, I don't have any Queen albums to show in today's Vinyl Finds video because the last like four that I need are goddamn rare and goddamn expensive and they're gonna take me a while to get so I haven't got any of them to show in this video. I'm hoping maybe in the next video I might have one at least but I'm not holding out. I know it's gonna take me a while to get the last Queen albums that I need on vinyl because well, like I said, they're ridiculously rare and ridiculously expensive and I've already got an outbid on like 12,000 of them and I just know it's got to be difficult but I'm willing to wait. Everything will happen eventually. So in the meantime, because I've not had any luck in getting the albums that I need, I've been collecting like singles that I've been missing just to make up the gaps in my collection and also like I said I've been getting some like solo stuff. This is why I have quite a lot of Queen singles to show in this video. The last 7 inch Queen single I have to show is A Bicycle Race and Flat Bottom Girls. I mean I had this but it was just the record I didn't have a sleeve for it and I really wanted the picture sleeve for it and I think this was like 199 and this sleeve always goes for quite a lot of money. I have no idea why but I got out bid on this a few times as well, but I found this one on a buy it now for one ninety nine. So epic! Um, I love this picture on the back. I have it on a poster back there. I just love it. I love this era for Queen. I don't know why. This is kind of like my favourite era, not musically, but for how they look. You know? Don't judge me. Um, I love the label. It's got bikes all the way around it. I love it. So I now I'm going to move on to 12 inch. I'm gonna start with Queen because I don't have as many Queen as I do Michael Jackson to show today. So a few Vinyl Finds videos back I showed that I just got the The Game album by Queen but I wasn't sure if it was like a true first pressing. I knew it was original. I didn't think it was like one of the first to be pressed. So after that video I did find out what the matrix numbers were for a true first pressing of the game. I scoured the world, I climbed mountains and I swam across rivers to find this bloody record and it was nowhere to be seen. Alright? And then one day it just popped up on eBay out of the blue. I thought all my prayers had been answered at once. I bowed down to random is in the street and I kissed their feet and then I bought it. So this little bugger is the earliest pressing of the game that you can find. It is not in a reflective sleeve like the other one is. I'm not sure of the reason why but I'm not complaining because then that means the difference. I have a reflective sleeve and then I have a not so reflective sleeve but it is still kind of reflective. The sleeve is in immaculate condition. I am so happy with this. The inner sleeve just looks the same. The pictures here. And then the record also looks the same. But if you're wanting to find the earliest pressing of the game, you are looking for an A3U, B2U matrix number. So if you're wanting that, go ahead and find this. They are hard to bloody find, I will tell you that now because I spent 
literally about six months trying to find this. But now I have it in my possession. I am very bloody happy. And I feel like now I do have a true first pressing of the game. Even though my other one was still an original, it wasn't as early as I wanted it to be, you know? I have two Freddie Mercury solo 12 inch singles. And I won these from the same sell it on ebay and i feel like i won them for such a steal these were only four pounds each and solo freddy stuffs can sometimes go for quite a lot of money so i feel like i got these for a true bargain uh this one is love me like there's no tomorrow i absolutely adore this photograph this cover and everything like jesus have mercy on my soul the Side two is let's turn it on, the extended version, and oh, for God's sake, look at that shirt, I mean, it is on CBS, a red CBS label. I love all of Queen's solo careers. I really do wish that John had a solo career because he was such a talented songwriter, but I love Freddie's solo career and Brian's solo career and Roger's solo career. I need to own more of Brian's and Roger's solo career because I hardly own anything. Freddie's solo career I think just tops it for me. I mean just very slightly because I do love all of their solo careers. And then I have to go along with the 7 inch that I just got. I got the 12 inch version of Living On My Own. Uh, the extended version again. The B side is My Love is Dangerous, the extended version. This picture, these live pictures, I mean, oh my god. Can we all just thank Freddy for performing live without a shirt on? Can we? I'm going to thank him for that. This is on a orange and yellow CBS label. So the last Queen 12 inch record I have to show is something quite exciting actually. Um, I adore it already and I've only owned it for about a week. Um, it's sort of an album but it's a compilation album. This is from Korea and it is the best of Queen. Uh, this is a Korean compilation. Um, look at this sleeve. This is part of the reason why I wanted to own this. This a hard life video. A lot of people don't like it, I just think it is so great and it just looks really good. Do you not think? I love this. So at the back it has the track listing and next to each song it has what the song is in Korean which I think is pretty cool. Um, it has some pictures on there as well. The inside comes with this posh ass plastic sleeve for the record and it the label looks like this, it's on red and it's on creator, I could be butchering that but that's the label. See as well as like not being able to get my hands on the remaining Queen albums that I need, I've also been like branching out to other country releases and bootlegs and stuff because while I can't get the what the albums that I need I might as well be getting some of the stuff that I want so this was one of them that I got so I've been banging on about this list of basic singles of Michael Jackson that I was missing and that I wanted to get to add to my collection and a lot of these are those basic singles I was missing I've been quite lucky in finding them Michael Jackson I just can't stop loving you I do already own this I own a UK pressing of this and it has the poster with it. I wanted the version where it didn't have the poster with it. So this is a Holland pressing. The sleeve to this one is ever so slightly different to the UK one. It's in more of a cardboard actual sleeve with a spine whereas the other one isn't. It's kind of flimsy and it doesn't have a spine. So this one doesn't come with a poster and that's what I wanted. It does look similar on the back but it does have details here and like down here that are different to the UK version and um, I I think this was about three pounds and I'm just I'm so happy with it I didn't think it would be much different but it is quite a lot different also the label does look slightly different again on this one compared to the UK one the B side is Baby Be Mine. Staying with the Bad Album, I finally got the 12 inch single of Liberian Girl. 
I mean, look at this cover. I I have had the 7 inch version of this for like 3 years now. I just never ever got around to getting the 12 inch version. And this is why I made this list. To kick myself up the arse to get the ones that I was missing. Because I always just overlook the ones that are easy to get. The B side is get on the floor and girlfriend and of course those both of those songs are amazing as well this is a really good record the label again is on epic and it is a first pressing so that's even better for the last time staying with the bad album again one that i just completely overlooked for so bloody long was the 12 inch single of smooth criminal and now the 7 inch version of this was one of the first ever records that I got about 7 years ago and I never got around to getting the 12 inch version again so kicks myself up the bum and I got this I think again this was about £4 I don't know why I don't bother with these because they're never really that expensive I just look out for the rarer stuff and I shouldn't sometimes do that I should just get the standard stuff so anyway, this is Smooth Criminal. Very bloody happy to have this one because I love this cover. Get out, I mean, this is this is amazing. Now the B side is the dance mix and the acapella version. Hello. I need to listen to that. I mean, anything Michael Jackson acapella, you know what I'm talking about. So the next one is something that I really wanted because I do not have a lot of history album singles I have like one and that's Stranger in Moscow the remixes so I really wanted to get another history single and I found this and it is Scream the remixes uh, featuring Janet Jackson but this one does come with the hype sticker and it says featuring remixes by David Morales Naughty by Nature and Dave Jam Hall. And I just love the sleeve for the screen releases. I mean, I think there's like three more releases that all have different sleeves for screen, but it always has like the Janet and the Michael uh, silhouettes, and I just really like it. I think it looks really good. Uh, I really like how the back looks as well because it has some of Michael's artwork here. I'm actually like, obsessed with how this record looks because I think the label compliments this so well i mean look at it it's maroon i love this it is it looks so it looks so good right love it heal the world i'm almost finished now with the dangerous singles on 12 inch i think i only need who is it and in the closet now so this is heal the world and i adore this cover i mean it's just so bright and colorful i love it so much um, this is what the bat looks like. It has Heal the World, Wanna Be Starting Something remix, Don't Stop Till You Get Enough remix, and a Rock With You remix on it as well. So I think this is a pretty good single. I mean, it has a lot of stuff on it. Uh, this also comes with a poster. The poster looks the same as the 7 inch poster bag one. So it looks like that is on epic again so that was the last of the michael jackson singles that i had to show i have two more records to show and both of them made me scream when i got them if you've watched some of my videos you might have watched the ones where i explained that i really did want an original pressing of the invincible album because i only have a reissue of the album which I thought was going to be an original pressing. It was stated as an original pressing, but when it came to me, it was not. It was one of those music on vinyl reissues. So I was a little bit bummed off that I didn't have an original of Invincible. Since I've got that record about five years ago, I have been on the hunt for an original pressing of Invincible. And original presses of Invincible are extremely bloody expensive and I did not want to spend a hundred pounds on this record. My dreams came true, finally. The patience was all worth it when I finally 
got one. I mean, this was one of my main collecting goals and it's come true. I mean, <laughs> uh, this was only £25 and that is the cheapest I have ever seen an original pressing of Invincible go for. I mean, there are a few on eBay right now, but they're all like £97 and so on. I mean, this... Ah, God, I'm so happy. This comes with the original hype sticker. That was one factor that I really wanted. And I'm just so happy. So it does look ever so slightly different to the reissue. And um, there's just like more credits on the bottom here because it had to have a different date on it and stuff. Um, but the sleeves look almost the same. Um, this is what it's a double album so it has two uh, it just has lyrics and some illustrations on that one and again lyrics illustrations so the records are both the same so i'll only show one um it's just really minimal and i just think it looks so great i mean this isn't on 180 gram like the reissue is but i have played this and i can honestly say there is no difference in the sound quality. I honestly feel like Invincible is one of my favourite Michael Jackson albums. I mean, this album is so good. This is so underrated. If you've never listened to Invincible, just please, just give it a go. It deserves to be listened to. So I'm on to my last vinyl right now to show. And if you watched my coloured vinyl collection that I posted a, a bit ago you've seen a little sneak peek of what the records look like but I didn't show all of it because I wanted to save some of it for this video this is like one of those bootlegs that is ridiculously rare and everybody wants it simply because it looks amazing and the track listing I mean the track listing is like rare I'll get on to why it's rare. So I've been after this record for a number of years that I cannot even remember. It has never really popped up on eBay a lot of times. I'd say it's been on eBay about five times, but it's always been snatched up so quickly. Um, I've been outbid on this many times. So to earn this right now, a record that I've wanted to earn for years and to have it finally in my collection, it just feels so special, you know? And so this is the Michael Jackson In Loving Memory Unreleased Stemmers and Great Duets. Um, I mean, this is like brand new. Uh, the cover, I just love the cover. I mean, the back. This is, it says down here, limited edition, only 500 copies made, 180 gram multicolored vinyl. And this is just so special i mean although this is a bootleg it is so well made all records should be made like this i swear to god like it is made out of the thickest cardboard it is glossy like it is a gatefold and the spine is bound like a book like it has i don't know it's like bound with plastic it is just so high quality and it's ju it just feels expensive, you know? This is a double album and it's compiled of, like, like it says, unreleased demos and duets. And some of these songs I have never, never listened to because I didn't even know Michael had any kind of influence or inclusion in any of these songs. I mean, there are the great duets and the unreleased demos like the Spanish version of I Just Can't Stop Loving You. There's Somebody Was Watching Me with Rockwell, which we all know. Then there's I'm In Love Again with Minnie Ripperton. Like, I've never heard of that. There's Eaten Alive with Diana Ross. I mean, yeah, I've heard of that one. Somebody Put Your Hand Out, which was only released on promo cassette. There's The Man with Paul McCartney, um, which is on a Paul McCartney record. There's Going Back to Alabama with Kenny Rogers. Again, I've never heard that one. You're the One with Jennifer Holliday. Never heard that one. Jam, an unreleased vocal demo version. Then there's Save Me with Dave Mason. Never heard that. 
Get It with Stevie Wonder. That is a Stevie Wonder song. That's a really good song. Um, Give In To Me, the unreleased instrumental version. And then the Say Say Say, the special 12 inch version with Paul McCartney. I didn't even know Michael was in some of these songs. I don't even know who some of these people are. I'm so excited to listen to this. So this is a gatefold and the gatefold is something I didn't show in my coloured vinyl collection video. And the gatefold looks like this. I mean, look at it. Isn't it cool? I just love this so much. And then we come to the records. Both of them come in this, these very thick, plastic anti-static sleeves and then we have the records that look like this I mean this is the only marbled vinyl that I own and I kind of understand now why people adore marble vinyl because this is just incredible it is on 180 gram as well so it is pretty damn heavy this is what the other record looks like it just is just stunning oh get out of here for goodness sake so that was everything i had to show in this final finds video i really really hope that in my next final finds video i will have at least one of the queen albums that i'm missing to show but we'll see we'll see how things pan out i mean i'm not in any rush to get them because i don't want to buy the first one i see and spend way too much money on it so I am willing to be patient. I really hope you enjoy this video and I will see you in my next one. Goodbye.